Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, digital change champions and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney-Burke and this podcast is brought to you by Digital Training Institute. In this episode, I discuss online gaming with gaming expert Owen Murphy and my seven-year-old son Bobby. In social media news, Facebook rolls out live with friends and others. Snapchat launches custom Snapchat stories and a teenager in Belfast is charged under the Malicious Communications Act after he makes comments on social media following the Manchester terrorist attack. Owen, Bobby and I discuss online gaming. Why do kids want to game online and what should parents be aware of? In shoutouts, three organisations shedding a little light into the world of online gaming. Ask JSB. Well, I ask Owen gaming questions on behalf of parents. In JSB's column, online gaming, child's play or a predator's playground. And find out what online gaming tool will save a gamer's week. Social media news. Facebook rolls out live with friends and others. Facebook is giving us so many more live features and now we can go live with friends and other people. Live chat with friends lets you invite friends to a private chat about a public live broadcast. You can invite friends who are already watching or other friends who you think may want to tune in. You're able to jump back into the public conversation at any time and you can still continue chatting with your friends via messenger after the broadcast ends. Last year, Facebook started rolling out the ability for public figures to go live with a guest. It's now available for all profiles and pages on iOS, and that includes me. Live With lets you invite a friend into your live video so you can hang out with them or for marketers like me, conduct an interview. If you want to know how to add somebody to your live video, click on the link associated with this podcast at digitaltraining.ie. Snapchat launches custom Snapchat Stories. The new feature allows you to create stories with friends rather than by yourself. Like with regular stories, videos and photos in a custom story will display for 24 hours and a custom story will stay active until no one has contributed to it for 24 hours. To create a custom story, you tap Create Story in the Stories screen on Snapchat, name the story, designate who can add to it, and then add images or video. The designated contributors will then be able to add to it. Custom stories will appear in the My Story section. You can be a contributor to an unlimited number of custom stories simultaneously, but you can only have three that you've created running at any one time. So, who wants to collaborate with JSB Snaps on a custom story? Add me. A teenager in Belfast is charged under the Malicious Communications Act after he made comments on social media following the Manchester terrorist attack. The Malicious Communications Act, which also applies to online communication, is a British Act of Parliament that makes it illegal to send or deliver letters or other articles for the purpose of causing distress or anxiety. The teen has been charged with improper use of a public electronic communications network. He is expected to appear before Belfast Magistrates Court next month. In 2014, 694 people were found guilty of offences under the Act in the UK. Interview. In today's show, I interview Owen Murphy the Galway Gamer host on Furt FM and also presenter and content creator on hitstartnow.com. I also speak with Bobby about why he loves gaming and why he wants to start online gaming. Guys, you're very welcome to GSB Talks Digital. Thank you very much. So Bobby, let's start with you. I know that you love gaming because you game almost every day of the week. Why do you love gaming so much? Because it's fun, you can actually, um, like, if it's a building game, you can build stuff like a house or a tower, you know. And what are your favourite games? 
Well, that I have our Star Wars Battlefront Lego Worlds. And do you play with your friends? Yeah. But recently you've been asking me to join the Xbox Online Gaming Hub. Yeah. And why do you want to join that? Because it's fun with other people and then just you alone. Okay, so you want to compete against other people. Yeah. But do you know those other people? Well, whenever you go on to that, you'll see the person who made the thing and the people who joined them. Um, well, let's bring Owen in at, at this stage. Owen, you've been gaming for how many years? I've been gaming since the early 1990s, I'd say. Um, I got my first console when I'd say I was about eight years old. I got a Nintendo Game Boy, and I've been gaming ever since that. And so, and you've also recently had a son, Parker. I have indeed, yes. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. What age is he? Uh, he, at the time of recording, he is exactly two months. Is he gaming yet? Um, well, <laughs> I wouldn't say he's gaming yet, but he sat there and watched me play a few games. It's one of the first things I saw kind of really taking his interest was my gaming from across the room. And he's sitting there, he's watching the screen while I'm playing kind of ducktails and stuff like this, kind of old-fashioned games. And I think the colours on the screen are just grabbing his attention, which is... It's great, there's a little gamer in there yet. So you'll be thinking about where I'm at now. Bobby is seven and he's asking questions about uh, online gaming. And to be honest, I'm in a situation where I need to educate myself, hence this podcast and hence this conversation. Um, so what are the things that I need to look out for and what are the questions and conversations that Bobby and I need to be having? Well, first of all, I reckon education is definitely the way to go. It's easy to just kind of slam online gaming and say, that's not the case, that shouldn't be done. But I'd approach online gaming the way I would with kind of anything else for a kid. I wouldn't let a kid do anything online that I wouldn't let a kid do outdoors, for example. If you are to play on Xbox Live, for example, I would ensure that the child is playing with people he knows. Like... The way Xbox Live works is the same as PlayStation Network as well and PS Plus, is that there are age restrictions there to stop kids from playing all those games, games made for mature adults. But it only works one way. What I mean is, basically, kids can't play 18 plus games, but everybody can play 3 plus games. Mm -hmm. You know, so the way I personally approach it is... I would contact the his mother, the mothers and fathers of his friends that he wants to play with online. I would get their gamer tags, their PSN network IDs, and add them on personally, so that you know exactly who he's playing with at any one time. So, from that perspective, if you approach it that way, then the age restriction isn't such an issue. Um, I don't believe it should be. No, no. I believe if you're playing like that, make sure that everything is played within parties, everything is made within lobbies created yourself. Uh, You can create lobbies and you can decide who is in those lobbies, whether it's friends or anybody, or invite only. If you create these lobbies and make sure it's invite only, therefore you're sending out out the, uh, the lobby request, the game request for other players to play, well then you're in complete control. Okay, how does that sound, Bobby? Playing online, but with people that you know and playing with your friends. Mm, that sounds okay. Okay, okay, that's good. We, we've moved a little step forward, so I will cool. investigate that. The other thing to say is that parents are fearful of online generally. I mean, if we listen back to last week's podcast about social media and children under the age of 14, there are lots of myths out there about online Are there any myths that you want to debunk around online gaming? I know it has evolved because when I went to college, gosh, almost 20 years ago, I remember guys in my house who I was sharing with on the sofa all night and gaming all the time. Mm -hmm. But that has kind of changed. I'd still say that those characters exist. Um, It would be outrageous to say that that doesn't happen. It does. But I think that people go through so many different different things in our lives that people probably have time to do just online gaming for a while and then they'll move on to something else or 
there's the other guys then who play for an hour and then put it away. I think just like anything else, too much of anything is a bad thing. That also goes for video games. It goes for absolutely anything. So, yes, you will have the guy who sits there for six hours straight playing video games, but you'll also have the guy who sits there for six hours straight watching Netflix and binge watching seems to be encouraged, you know, where binge playing doesn't. It's it's the same thing. There, you'll always have people who will overdo anything. So let's talk about games then, and I know you have some with you today. How does a parent decide age-appropriate games? I do have a small handful of video games with me today uh, from my own personal collection back home, and each one of these has indicators on the case which will show you exactly who it's made for, who it's appropriate for, if you will. As I said, anybody can play uh, games based for younger folks, but younger folks shouldn't be playing games based for older folks. And each of these games, I'm just going to pass them over to you here, each of these games has little indicators and see if you yourself can spot them to show them off. Okay, so let's have a look. Can we see the indicator, uh, Bobby? I think I can. I think it might be here. That's it down there, yeah. The big 7 plus uh, indicates that this game is for people of 7 and older. And each of these games will have an indicator like that on it. The way it seems to work is 3 plus is gaming for everybody. It's the equivalent to your universal movies. Everybody can watch them. 7 plus would be the equivalent then to, say, PG. It's, ba it's kind of for everybody, but there might be something a little bit scarier. You know, that kind of way. Then you've got your 12s, your 16s, and your 18s. Online gaming isn't going to go anywhere. It's, it's, not, only, no, it's, it's only going to grow. Mm -hmm. So how do we face that fact? And how do we become better parents at embracing the hobby and the passion that our kids have for gaming? I think by monitoring it, um, I don't think, I, as much as online gaming is huge, it's not all gaming. You can still game without playing online. You can still buy online style games and play them without gaming online. Everything doesn't have to be online, but normally your console will be hooked up online. So you'll still have, say, access to patches when need be, patches are things that fix your game if your game is kind of buggy on release. So these things will kind of be installed automatically. That's why it's kind of good to have things online. But the online gaming side of things is not necessarily the be-all and end-all of video games. You know, you can play these huge, illustrious, single-player video games with so much to them. There's plenty of games where there is both in it, where you can play as single player and indeed add multiplayer so there's something for you and your friends to play and there's something for you yourself to play when you're on your own it depends on what exactly you're into but no it's not going anywhere and the thing is to if you are embraced just do so cautiously do so like you would with anything else make sure it's monitored there are plenty of little bits and pieces built into these machines to make sure that that happens. You can get child accounts, for example, on Xbox Live as opposed to an adult account. You can program your Xbox and your PlayStation to not play games over a set uh, age restriction. Therefore, if I was to put in Mortal Kombat XL there, after programming it not to, it simply won't play the disc without needing a passcode from you. You, of course, would know the passcode. The same as you would with TV channels you wouldn't like your kids to watch. You can also have the likes of... There's a lot of chat online, for example, so you can make sure that that comes through the monitor as opposed to just through the headset. Therefore, ensuring that anybody that your child is chatting to online, you also hear them. So... It's all about embracing it, but making sure you do so with a mature adult mind. Have you ever experienced cyberbullying on online gaming? Unfortunately, yes, yes. Uh, there is a lot of it um, through gaming sites and indeed the games themselves. Um, to a point where it's kind of sickening, to be perfectly honest. Gaming sites seem to be rampant with it, and the way I go about it personally is instead of, well, I say gaming sites, I mean ones that anybody can post on. And personally, I approach ones that are a little less YouTube and a little more 
forum based, if you will. So your comment section on YouTube for a lot of video games is toxic, to say the least. But if you were to gear towards more a gaming site that has active moderators and has a no abuse policy, well then that's kind of the safe place to talk about video games. Therefore, if anybody does attempt to cyberbully you, you have the opportunity to report this and get them banned. Okay, Owen and Bobby, uh, thanks for talking to me and all our listeners about gaming and online gaming and I will continue to learn the ropes. Thank you, thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. Shoutouts. In this part of the show, I give shoutouts to brands, organisations or individuals whose work online is remarkable and worth talking about. Online gaming is currently the biggest selling point of most video game genres, to a point where the classic single-player experience has been pushed into the background in most games. Online has also taken over the space which couch players used to occupy, meaning that most gaming interactions are now done with strangers as opposed to the player sitting next to you. With the online experience playing such a prominent role, it's important to ensure that your child is safe while playing their favourite games. So, in this week's shoutouts, we look at three organisations shedding a little light into gaming online. One. Leia Healthcare Online Gaming Safety with Dr. Maureen Griffin. Forensic psychologist and lecturer at University College Cork, Dr. Maureen Griffin has covered many social issues throughout her career. However, she takes a specific interest in the impact of online offending and safety. In a collaboration video with Leia Healthcare on YouTube, Dr. Griffin explains a few simple steps which parents can use to ensure their child's safety while gaming online. From checking the game's case or download information, to ensuring that the game in question is suitable for younger players, to keeping the gaming device in plain sight, to ensure that you, as a parent, can watch over the gaming session and the activities that your child is engaging in. Two. Internet Matters specialise in online safety. Now celebrating three years online, Internet Matters tackle a barrage of different online activities via their YouTube channel and their website. In their video, Online Gaming Safety Tips to Keep Kids Safe, Internet Matters teams up with ourfamilylife.co.uk to look at an array of different measures you can take to ensure your child's safety. Presenter Adele tells a story of how she found her daughter chatting to a grown man while playing Xbox Live. She then gives a step-by-step tutorial of how to activate the console's built-in features that will allow to prohibit certain activities. For example, the Xbox 360 and Xbox One have options that will block games that are not age-appropriate, limit online activity, activate the machine's family timer and more. The video ends with Adele feeling more empowered about the console as she now knows that these options are available. For more information about console settings, go to internetmatters.org. Three. Everybodyplays.co.uk is a news review site covering upcoming and recently released video games. However, unlike most gaming sites, this one is focused on being a parent's guide to what's going on in gaming. Reviews and articles are colour-coded for your convenience. Red articles are focused on gaming for a more mature audience, cracking the occasional joke and looking in-depth into the gameplay. Blue articles, on the other hand, are there as quick and easy read-ups for parents. Here the pieces will be written in a different style, ensuring that it's not too heavy and that you don't have to know the difference between analogue sticks and motion controls, and so that you can understand whether or not this title would be suitable for your child. Everybody Plays will also mark the game out of five, depending on its complexity, giving you the parent control over whether or not you believe this game would suit your child. Another unique feature on the site is the ability to quickly scan games for your child via their age group. To find out more, log on to everybodyplays.co.uk. Ask JSB brings the voices of my listeners onto the show. So you now have an opportunity to ask me a question, have it aired on the podcast, and I will respond. 
If you want to hear your voice on JSB Talks Digital, simply log on to digitaltraininginstitute.ie forward slash ask JSB and you might find yourself and your question on air. In today's special show about gaming, I'm asking the questions on behalf of all parents, but Owen will answer them. Owen, what age is age appropriate for gaming? For gaming in general, I think I reckon at least wait until they're sat in school, uh, I believe. Um, I can't recall when I played my first game, so I can't actually say from that kind of experience, but I'd imagine wait until they're at least three or four. I know that three plus is kind of the minimal on all video games. It seems to be what they log as now you're allowed to play. Personally, I'd probably give it a little bit further on than that, but that is the minimal on the cases of video games. Is anybody over three, this is cool. What do parents need to look out for when children are asking to join online gaming hubs? I think if if nothing else, make sure that you're sticking with the big boys. You're not going off to random games online or random games that you found on the internet or anything like that. Stick with Nintendo, stick with Sony PlayStation and stick with Microsoft Xbox. All of these, there is a pullback on them. If anything goes wrong, you've got somebody to contact there. You know, you can contact Xbox, you can contact PlayStation. You have somebody to fight your corner, if you will. If you go onto random hubs online outside of, say, these three boys and then Steam being the big one for PC, then you're in very, very rocky territory. So I'd say stick within those parameters. So what games do you recommend for seven-year-olds? There are so many, so many. Um, Where do I even begin? I reckon Skylanders is huge. Skylanders is one that is one of the coolest ideas I've seen in a very, very long time. For anybody who doesn't know what Skylanders is, it's a game where you can basically get little toys, put them into what they refer to as a portal in your sitting room, and the characters that these toys represent will then appear within the video game and you can play as those characters. So there's a little something for everybody there. If you're a collector of little figurines, you can play that way. If you just want to do it on screen, that's cool too. And you've got all sorts of wild, unusual characters with, from like fish with water guns to uh, big tree gods and all sorts of stuff. Some very cool stuff in there. I'd also recommend Pokemon, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, it's a very simplistic idea. You run around, you pick up little monsters, you make them fight against other little monsters. Each one has their own elemental abilities and their own special moves. It's cute, it's adorable, and if you're into the competitive side of things, then there is also so much to that game. There is so much more than just cute little characters on the screen right there. Highly recommend Pokemon. It's absolutely fantastic. Of course, you've got the likes of Angry Birds then as well, and Angry Birds comes in all sorts of different flavors now. You can get your Star Wars Angry Birds. You can get all sorts of different ones. I believe they've recently had a movie too. And it's pick-up-and-play fun that pretty much anybody can play, regardless of age. Of course, Minecraft as well would be another absolutely huge one to a point where it's it's got its own conventions here in Ireland simply for Minecraft. And that's a great one for kids to get involved in, in my opinion, because it encourages creativity. You're given this world with little or nothing in it, and you've got to build this world into whatever you want it to be. Now, whether that's pictures of your vid- favorite video game characters or little houses for your avatar to live in, whatever you can think up, you can create within Minecraft. So, as I said, there are loads out there. There's also the likes of Disney Infinity, which does a similar thing to Skylanders, except with Disney characters. And considering Disney now own everything, you, that means you have Star Wars characters in there, that means you have Marvel characters in there, and all sorts of others. And of course, don't brush the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, who's got a new game coming out called Sonic... Not called Sonic Heroes, Sonic Forces, I believe it's called. And Super Mario. Don't knock those either because they also make for hugely entertaining family fun. Owen, thank you so much. And I have to tell my listeners that D-Pad Dad is a new blog from Owen on headstartnow.com. And it's about juggling, gaming 
and parenting, so be sure to check it out. GSB's column. In today's column, I asked the question, online gaming, is it child's play or a predator's playground? Gaming is big business. In fact, it was worth over 244 million euro to the Irish economy in 2016. Its growth rate is about 7% on the previous year, and I expect that upwards trend to continue. But what is the social and personal impact of gaming? And is it just child's play for our children, or should we shudder at the thought of predators targeting them? This column probably leads on very nicely from last week's when I spoke about parental responsibility and social media. I find myself somewhat in the same boat when it comes to online gaming. When Sophie was growing up in the 1990s, she wanted to dress dolls up online on Star Doll. I remember we had a dial-up connection, but she had the patience to wait for the site to load. But it's a different story today with Bobby. There is no dial-up, internet access is instant, and at seven he wants to join an online gaming hub and compete against his peers. He's looking for competitive edge and he wants to improve his gaming skills. As you can tell from my interview with Bobby and Owen, they are both very passionate about gaming. So it got me thinking, am I equipped with enough knowledge to make decisions about Bobby's gaming habits? This question, in fact, prompted the theme of the podcast. The Entertainment Rating Board, which rates the age appropriateness of games for children, has a useful guide on their website about how families can discuss online gaming. Here are some of the tips I have taken to parent wisely when making decisions around Bobby's gaming habits. Check the rating of the games. Rating categories suggest age appropriateness for games and apps via six age-based rating categories. The back of the games also have icons which depict violence, bad language, horror and more, so do look out for those. Education. Making Bobby aware that he should never tell anyone he doesn't know his real name or passwords, financial data, his birth date, home address, phone number, school, or our place of work. I'll also teach him cyber etiquette, teaching him to be thoughtful and cautious about the information and permissions he provides when registering on a game's website or a mobile app. We'll also look at certified games. I have shown Bobby the ESRB Privacy Certified logo, which provides assurance that a game's website or app is collecting data that is compliant with privacy laws and best practices. Finally, use the device settings and monitoring tools to disable in-app purchases, turn off location tracking, limit online access and or data usage, and enforce homework or bedtime hours. If, like me, you want to learn more here, there are some links that will help you inform yourself about your children's gaming habits on the blog post associated with this podcast over at digitaltraining.ie. And remember, education is empowerment and it is our job to parent and protect and it is only with knowledge that we can do this. Social media of the week. When it comes to gaming, Twitch is probably the number one app that every player's phone needs. Just like the desktop version, Twitch allows gamers to stream their play sessions live online for the world to see. This allows for any amount of different game styles to be viewed, as it's the broadcaster's choice what they wish to stream. Couple this with the fact that the streamer can also add on the fly commentary throughout the game, and Twitch becomes a hugely entertaining app. From here, viewers can interact with the gamer in real time via a comment section that appears below the video stream. This, coupled with the commentary, opens opportunities for the streamer to really show off their personality, not just their in-game skills. Twitch is by far the most popular streaming app in video game history. It's used by games companies to display their upcoming titles, international tournament organisers to show off their skills, and also intensity of gaming tournaments. To download the free Twitch app, simply head over to the iOS store and search for Twitch. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of JSB Talks Digital and a big thanks to Owen and Bobby for their insightful contributions. To ensure you never miss an episode of JSB Talks Digital, make sure you subscribe on your smartphone on iTunes or Stitcher. You can also subscribe on SoundCloud. As always, I have everything discussed on today's show on my blog at digitaltraining.ie. 
I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke. This is JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. JSB Talks Digital.